don't care about Nuri Martinez's feelings, if you ask me. I think that she should be thrown out of the Los Angeles City Council. Anyone who shares racist ideas such as that towards a child, an innocent child, especially, you have got to be a cruel, vile human being. I don't care about her resignation. Throw her out of representing the people of Los Angeles. Yeah, I said it. Yes, I did. Throw her out. Don't, re- don't. If she chooses to resign, okay, she resigns before she's kicked out, fine. But don't wait around expecting her to resign from being a city council member when she only resigned as president of the city council. So according to CNN and other news outlets, Los Angeles City Council president resigns from leadership role after audio leaked of her racist remarks. Los Angeles City Council member Nuri Martinez has resigned as the legislative body's president after making racist remarks about a fellow council member and his black child. I take responsibility for what I said and there are no excuses for those comments, Martinez said in a statement. I'm so sorry. Martinez's resignation as president is effective immediately, according to the statement, though she remains a member of the council. Just give me one moment because there's something. Try and get this. Damn, this is whack. Okay, so it reads, much of the conversation focused on maps proposed by the city's redistricting, redistrict, redistricting commission and the council members' frustration with them, as well as the need to ensure that heavily Latino districts did not lose economic assets in the once-in-a-decade process, according to the Times. The council members then discussed Council Member Mike Bonin, a white man. In the in clips of the leaked audio posted by the Times, Martinez is heard recounting a conversation and says Bonin thinks he's effing black. According to the Times, Martinez says Bonin appeared with his son on a float in a Martin Luther King Jr. parade and he handled his young black son as though he were an accessory. The boy is eight years old, according to a Facebook post by his father. The Times reported that Martinez also said of Bonin's child, parece changuito, or he's like a monkey. In the leaked audio, Martinez can be heard speaking about Bonin's son allegedly misbehaving while at the parade by hanging from a railing of their float, saying the kid is going to tip us over. They're raising him like a little white kid, Martinez said in the audio released by the Times. I was like, this kid needs a beat down. Let me take him around the corner and then I'll bring him back. The audio, according to the Times, was part of a conversation that took place in October 2021. CNN has not been able to verify the audio recording. It surfaced just weeks before the November 8 election that we decide that will decide the next mayor of Los Angeles and several city council seats. It is unclear who recorded the audio. The context of this conversation was concern over the redistricting process and concern about the potential negative impact it might have on communities of color. My work speaks for itself. I worked hard to lead the city through its most difficult time, Martina said in a statement to CNN made before a resignation. Bonin and his husband, Sean Arian, had asked the city council to remove Martinez as council president and said she needs to resign from office. We are appalled, angry, and absolutely disgusted that Nuri Martinez attacked our son with horrific racial slurs and talked about her desire to physically harm him. It's vile, abhorrent, and utterly disgraceful, the couple said in a joint statement. Bonin and Arian added, that they are equally angry and disgusted by the ugly racist comments about our son from Kevin DeLeon and Ron Herrera, who should also resign from their post. And by the tacit acceptance of those marks from Gil Cedillo. 
the California-Hawaii State Conference of the NAACP and the Los Angeles branch of the organization are calling for the resignation of all council members involved in that conversation and asking the city to investigate how far the racial am- amnesia has impacted hiring and other decisions of the council. They said in a joint statement, we will not sit idly by and allow our elected representatives to engage in these kinds of disgusting and racist behaviors, said Latricia Mitchell, president of the Los Angeles branch of the NAACP. Council member Nithia Raman, who according to the Times, was also referenced in the leaked audio, released a statement to CNN Sunday also calling for resignations. Racist, homophobic, and deeply cruel statements like these are disqualifying for elected office in L.A., the people who made them should resign. If they don't, I'll vote to remove them from council leadership at the first opportunity, Raman said. In a statement Sunday, Sedillo called the comments about Bone and Son simply unacceptable. I want to start by apologizing. While I did not engage in the conversation in question, I was present at times during the meetings, during this meeting last year, Sedillo said. It is... My instinct to hold others accountable when they use derogatory or racially divisive language. Clearly, I should have intervened. I failed in holding others and myself to the highest standard. The hurtful and harmful remarks about my colleague's son were simply unacceptable. Use public life. But our families should always be off limits and never part of the political discourse. Herrera has not responded for, to CNN's request for comment, but the Los Angeles County Federation of Labor, AFL-CIO, to apologies from him to Bona and his family members in Black and Wazakin community members because they, they, they talked about Oaxacans who are dark, dark-skinned Mexicans. And it was disgusting what they said. There is no justification to no excuse for the vile remarks made in that room, period. The apology said, and I didn't step up to stop them, and I will have to bear the burden that cross going forward. So, I'm going to stop here, and I'm going to say this. I am not surprised. Okay, first of all, I am 75% foundational black American, okay? But 25% of me is a person who has Caribbean, Spanish, Antillean heritage, okay? There is racism amongst Latinos, even within Latino culture, okay? Let me tell you this, all right? Okay? I remember growing up, I went to school with Latinos, especially living in New York, like full-blooded Latinos. Before they found out that I was Latino, they, well, not Latino, but when they, before they found out that I was like a quarter Latino, they would look at my ass and be like, oh, you know, you got nappy hair and you have weird looking eyes, you look Asian and stuff. And then they would find out through my family what my full heritage was. All of a sudden, them same bitches that was talking shit about me was trying to be cool with me because they found out I was a quarter Cuban. And you know what I would do? I would just look at them and I would basically walk away and not say anything to them and pay them dust. My motto is, if you wasn't going to be cool with me in the beginning, don't be cool with me when you find out that I got a little bit of the same heritage as you. Don't do that. I can't stand that. Okay? So... In Hispanic culture, for those of you who are from like the South, who don't really interact with them, unless you're from Florida and Texas and Georgia, there is a lot of racism, more so than within the American spectrum. See, our racism is more political, okay? Their racism is more dealing with featurism. Like, believe it or not, I'm going to say this, and a lot of y'all going to agree with me, A lot of white people, they don't really go at you based on your looks. Unless they doing like something petty to try to like cut you down or really hurt you. They want to go after you based on power, money, and influence. 
they don't have time to call you like nappy headed unless they want to be petty and just try to hurt you. And really, they just really small minded. It's more bigotry, but racism, power, money and influence. That's what they're about. OK, they could care less about your looks. But when if within Latino culture, it's really more so dealing with looks, skin color and hair, featurism, skin color and hair. OK, hair texture. All right. So in my mother's in my father's mother's family, there are different types of features that my grandmother and her of uh, her 10 siblings had. My grandmother was mulatto, okay? Most of her siblings were that. But my grandmother had mostly like frizzy long hair. Her sister had long wavy hair. But she was browner than my grandmother. My grandmother was actually the lightest of the females in her family. Then she had two younger sisters, three younger sisters. One of them had long hair, but was a little bit darker than her. One of them was light, but she had what we would call bad hair. That's what they would call bad hair. Her hair didn't grow really that long. And then there was her younger sister that had nice, quote unquote, nice hair. And she was like regular light skin. But my grandmother was high yellow. Okay. Based on the men in the family, three of them were very high yellow. One was actually a blonde when he was a kid. And the other three was just high yellow light skin. And one looked Chinese because I also have Chinese ancestry through that lineage. And he would wear a long ponytail and dress like a Chinese man. Until he was 40 years old, but his wife was actually a foundational black American. So what's interesting is that many of them tend to marry black people because that's a whole nother story for another time. But within the family, there was a lot of things in the race because their father actually was able to live his life as a white man when he moved to New York. And... It was really interesting because he looked Asian, but he wrote on his um, census, I'm a white man. And he was able to have the privileges of whiteness. And that's the whole spectrum of this conversation of the leak audio. It's I may not be white, but I'm not black. I'm not a N-I-G-G-E-R. So I can still shit on you, black people, black children, because I'm more closer to being white than being black. Yes, I'm a person of color, but from the color spectrum, I'm of the lighter color. My color is closer to being white. I'm not black. I'm not trying to be black. Don't want to be black. And I despise blackness. I may not necessarily hate black people, but I don't like y'all. And I have no respect for blackness, including black children and any white person that aligns themselves with being next to black people, whether it's through marriage or raising children. I consider you a black person. And I'm going to tell you something. That's the old mindset, because back in the days when a white person, whether it's a woman or a man, married a black person. They were no longer viewed as white. They were like a white person that lived a black life. So if you were associating with black people, even if you just lived in a black neighborhood, you weren't really looked upon as white because you wasn't around your own people. When they said that George Gascon was viewed as a black person because he's down with the blacks, he's Cuban. But because he aligns himself with black people and he's not trying to ruin black people, they don't consider himself Latino. Okay, Nuri Martinez needs to be kicked out of the city council along with the others, along with the others. They need to go get them out of there. Throw them out. Lock the key. 
lock them out and throw away the key. They don't deserve to represent any people. But I do have one thing that I do want to say. Is Nuri Martinez wearing a unit? Because I feel as though the hair ain't sitting right. It's something about the hair that ain't right for me. And that's what worries me about her. Because, you know, a lot of black men will run and flock to her. Because that's what they like. You got a lot of black men out here who really... And I want to say something. She didn't talk bad about black men per se. She talked bad about a black boy. But a lot of black men got a thing for women that look like her. And the problems that we have with this whole black and brown coalition is that too many of black men have given them this okay to really be disrespectful to say whatever they want to say about black people, particularly about black women and black children, because a lot of black men gas their heads because you got a lot of insecure black men out here that don't like themselves because they don't like their mothers. So they date them because that's what they like as a form of escapism, but they have a problem with themselves So they think that the rainbow is going to be, you know, it's going to happen with dating a a Hispanic woman. Come to find out that's not the case. I would never have this woman near any black child. You calling a black child a changuita, I believe that's what she said. Saying that he's an accessory. Saying that he deserves to be whipped. I've witnessed Hispanic women be cruel to black children. It's not funny. It's not funny at all. I've witnessed it myself. And it never happened to me, I want to say, because my grandmother and my aunt didn't play that. But you living in, if you live in New York, you would know what I'm talking about. I'm going to end it here by saying that this situation just gave Karen Bass the leg up to win. I'm just going to come out and say it. I know a lot of black people don't like her, but hey, she got the, she got the mayoral position. Another thing I'm going to say is that this black and brown coalition, I think is the beginning of the end. And with that being said, I'm signing off. Thank you for listening. Have a wonderful evening.